Lucas Media. So I was watching Gills Arenas, and you know they end up talking about Bronny where he scored four points, two rebounds, two assists out of 21 minutes. Now, all the panel pretty much said the same thing. They said that they feel like it's his first game, not a big deal. He's the 55th overall pick. We treated him like a first round pick. Gilbert Arsenal talked about how Victor Wimbayama had bad games and other superstar basketball players had bad games, their first NBA summer game. And they also talked about things that they could do, Bronny got to do, which is stay in the gym, get good work ethics. Kenya Martin says something about Bronny shouldn't go to the G League because how bad it is. And, you know, they all agreed that they don't see a problem with Bronny being in the league. He, you know, if he works hard, you never know what could come out of this. But here's the thing I think is funny about all of this. Now, did y'all know Rashad McCants, he's not in these conversations, really? It's because it's by design. Now, I don't feel like Gilbert is with Clutch Sports Payroll, but I understand why people think this, because we're all acting like we don't see what we saw. And again, I'm rooting for Bronny. I would, if Bronny became an all-star, hey, I'd be one of the first ones campaigning for him. It's not like his style of play have changed since high school. And Bronny was probably one of the first kids that they were pictured from elementary school all the way through high school. And I remember elementary school, he had sold out games. In high school, and then around his junior, senior year, people started saying, I don't know, you know. And Bronny has never been the best player ever on the court. And I think in high school, he was, what, second team? Uh, all, all, what, all state, all county, some something down there. So that lets you know that players are better. So when you see him skip, pretty much you go to college, you look confused at USC, and then now it looks like he has the same style of play. This is what gives people ammunition. And then he missed the, the other game for a knee injury. And I just wish we, I just wish that we would all be honest, honestly, all be honest. I wish JJ would come out and say, I wish LeBron would come out and say it, Genie Bus, ESPN, Fox, just say Ronnie's. At this moment, he's not an NBA player, but we don't care because it's going to sell tickets. And I have no problem with that. I have made video after video, you know, uh, encouraging Bronny. But we, we got to keep it real. And I was watching two raw video. He said ESPN had changed the format for him. Like, yeah, come on now. Come on. You know, it's too late. You can't unsee some stuff now. Now, I don't believe, I believe that he will have better games. But I don't see Bronny making this huge jump like corporate media is trying to push down. I think he'll be in the league four or five years, maybe. You know, and hey, I mean, it is what it is. My, one of my cousins played the league for six years, so I, I don't see a big deal about it. The, the fact that ESPN and, like I said, Gilbert Arenas, they can look every, they can look us straight in the face. Like, I don't know how they're able to do that and not just break out laughing. And again, there's no knock against Bronny. I have no problem with Bronny. My whole thing is just the narrative. Like, do y'all remember when we had conversations about our high school basketball players being exploited, our middle school players being exploited? Because you see these players, they're dominant, and you're the, you're the number one fifth grader. But by the time you go to college, you go going to community college. We might have to have this conversation about Bronny, even though he's a professional athlete, you know, at this point. So now you really can't make no excuses. But it's like, what, what kind of narrative are we giving people? And then you see J.J. Reddick talk about he's still trying to find a coaching staff. And you hear rumors that coaches are boycotting J.J. Reddick. They try to hire Hurley. You see Hurley went down there and turned it down. And LeBron signed a free agent, or a, he took less money. But then, you know, they're shocked that they're not getting some superstar players. And Gilbert Arenas talked about how the Lakers let LeBron down. Do you really think that? Yeah, they actually did. They let the fans down. The, the real diehard Laker fans that I know, they have been let down because it's a circus. So who wants to go? Who really wants to go go to the side show? LeBron don't care about winning no more clearly because he didn't he didn't got all the all the stats he'll ever need. Genie Bus don't care about winning. Rob Palenka don't care about winning. JJ Reddick just along for a ride. Nobody cares. And then you see things like, oh, can the Lakers win a championship next year? Are they? No, everybody knows that. <laughs> and then when Kenya Martin said, don't keep. Don't put Brian in the G League so you just want to have him with the top 15 players. Why? He should be able to get minutes anyway. He's a professional athlete now. Why he can't go? So he one of the only players that can't go to the G League and get major time like that? Talking about he might get ruined. Well, it's it's too late now. You know, you're in the big leagues now. You should have kept him in college. They should have kept him in college for at least another year to two. Let him get, let him become a star and get his confidence up and all of that. But no, people want to rush the process. Well, this is what comes with it. You know, it don't matter what Gilbert say. It don't matter what ESPN say, FS1, Fox say. It don't matter what corporate media say. The tape don't lie. The tape don't lie. 
And y'all really think that Bronny going to the Lakers ain't going to alienate his teammates, alienate people who might have thought about coming to LA? Because don't nobody want to get asked questions like that. I remember when athletes were talking about playing with LeBron and they said that they don't, a lot of players wasn't signing to him because of the media attention. I get it. I get it. Because if y'all win, he gets all the credit. If y'all lose, he gets none of the blame. It's always somebody else's fault. So I can see why, you know, now I don't want to go to that. Why do I want to go somewhere where we don't even care about winning no more? And you think I'm going to sign a mega deal? And then I'm looking over and I see your son on the team. And it's not like Bronny was a projected first round or top 10 pick. He's somebody who probably most people think he shouldn't have been in a draft. So I got to look over and see him. I got to see you. You and JJ Reddick had a podcast. And all of a sudden, Darvaham fired. Now, he the coach. And I'm supposed to believe in a winning culture? I really, I honestly, honestly, I really wonder what would Kobe think right now. I wonder, and y'all let me know at the bottom, like, do y'all think this type of stuff was still going on when Kobe was here? You know, the Lakers, I remember growing up, the Lakers were a story franchise. I grew up in, you know, the Magic when he was, you know, when they played the Bulls in the first series, when Jordan got his first title. I remember that era. Then I remember the whole Kobe Shaq era. And it was like the Lakers, they were so much story. Like, what would Dr. Buss think right now? What would Kobe Bryant think right now? What does Magic Johnson think? The Lakers have literally become the complete laughing stock. And it's been like this for a long time. It's just Kobe was there. But it's 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 terrible. <laughs> like, you know, and again, I hope Bronny becomes a great player. Maybe he becomes an all-star NBA a Hall of Famer. Whatever he achieves, I'm going to root for him. But it's just funny how people turn a blind eye. Now, you can make the argument that, like I said, player, a lot of head coaches, they sons become assistants um, or head coaches, i.e. Mike Shanahan with Kyle Shanahan. You know, Kyle Shanahan being a son. And, and this is after he fumbled the Falcons against the Patriots and a couple other Super Bowls and playoff appearances. So I get it. Nepotism is real. Nepotism and nepotism should exist. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is it's just funny how people are just looking at people in a straight face and saying, yeah, man, Bronny earned it. Well, how many how many players, you know, earned them scoring four points? I remember Marvin Williams, right? Marvin Williams, when he played for North Carolina, he was his number two pick coming off the bench. But you knew that he was one of the best players on the, on the floor. When was the last time you seen Bronny on the floor and thought he was a good player? Even a top five player, if that. And then, you know, the reason I go so hard is because I think that LeBron, I mean, I know they got Rich Paul who has a string of hold on, on sports right now. And I have, no, I have no problem with that either. But it's just crazy because you would have thought Lonzo Ball was the peak. And I defended LeVar, honestly. But you would have thought that was the peak. But Lonzo looked like he was ready to play in the league. And he changed his shot. LaMelo as well. You know, even Leandro got, you know, some preseason time. But Bronny just looked like he really looked like he should have stayed in college one more year. In my opinion, one more year wouldn't have hurt him. It would have made him way better. And he could have be probably a good chance he could have been a, a first round pick. Then you could have had a different argument about all of this, you know. But it's, it's just funny. <laughs> It's just funny how everybody just, you know, they, they want to ignore the obvious, the corporate media. But when you look at all the comments and all of that, you know, the fans know. But I just want to get my quick thoughts about it and tell me what y'all think.